Well, in case it slips your mind, darling, Bobby's my brother. I'll look after his interests. Well, it's because you are Bobby's brother that he needs me here. You are the one he needs protection from. You don't really expect me to come running to you every time I need a signature, do you? I don't expect you to come in here at all. Just see that I get them. Mine will be the second signature on every document, as long as Bobby is incapacitated. Don't get too comfortable in that chair, Donna. You're not going to be there for long. Well, Bobby, you look like somebody picked your pocket. No, but somebody has been messing around with replacement parts for my rigs. Well, I hope you got it sorted out. What do you think you're doing canceling the parts I need? Oh, i tell you what this is all about. Uh, when I was president of Ewing Oil, I ordered these parts, and then you took over, and I canceled that order. <sighs> the game is winner take all. I should have known you'd do whatever you could to sabotage me. Well, don't overreact. I'm not exactly going to blow up your wells, you know. Especially since they're going to be mine this time next year. I wouldn't count on that. Bobby, it's a race. Check your horse. For a minute. Watch my hey, look at this. He hit me. But you wait a minute. Now, come on. That's enough. That's enough. Come on. You get up there. and Now, you stay there, pal. You get back up there. Well, isn't that just like his daddy? Using brawn over brains. Say, yeah, that's enough. Well, he jumped him. I saw him jump him. Everybody else saw him jump. Well, he had every right to. John Ross was cheating. I saw him. And if he doesn't stop that, then they're going to have to stop playing together. Come on. Come on, Christopher. Come in the house, like that. Here, my son gets a bloody nose, and she gets upset about it. Come here, boy. Let me you, uh, get a good night's sleep? J.R., I don't think you really care how I slept last night. Well, of course I do. I always care how you feel. You care whether or not I've changed my mind about the will. Well, I just thought if you had a chance to sleep on it, you might see that you'd made a hasty decision. I don't think so. You're still going to see Harv Smithfield? Yes. I have an appointment with him at 2 this afternoon. Then you leave me no choice, Marla. I'm going to fight you every step of the way. And I won't be alone. I guarantee you Bobby will be with me. Hmm. Well, Monday, looks like Ray and I are going to make our new business official. Well, I hope for your sake you handle the business and he handles the horses. Yeah, Ray's not so bad at business. If you don't mind losing money. J.R., can't you ever say anything nice? Oh, I think the horse business would be perfect for Ray. I'm sure he'll even be able to tell one end from the other. Oh, stop. Mm. We all know what end of the horse you are. <laughs> Here we go. Man. On your mark. For a minute there, I thought you were going to invite him in. How did you get in here? Well, I rented this apartment for you, remember? I always make an extra key. What are you doing here? You sound a little nervous when I talk to you on the phone. I thought I'd uh, check on my investment. I don't like this, JR. Well, darling, I'm not paying you to like it. I'm paying you to do it. Hey, Bobby. It was quite a show you put on at dinner last night. Yeah, I thought it worked. You think Cliff is dumb enough to fall for it? Well, he fell for that rodeo setup, didn't he? Now, he's not only willing, he's anxious to believe the beam is on his side. He'll believe anything that'll help him get what he wants. Let's have a little breakfast. Couldn't wait to get back home. Hello, JR. Didn't you enjoy Harrison's company? He can be real charming when he wants to be. And I thought he'd done just about anything to please you. Well, he is trying very hard to please somebody. What did you have to do with my getting that promotion? What made you think I had anything to do with it? Something Harrison said this weekend. You made him send Liz Craig to Houston and give me her job, didn't you? Oh, Pamela, you have an exaggerated view of my power. I merely pointed out your, your many talents to him, that's all. Why? Well, I thought you looked unhappy. Thought you needed something to distract you. Well, how very kind of you. Well, I thought so. And now that Bobby's found something to distract him, everything worked out just perfectly, didn't it? Bobby. Jenna Wade's back in town. Haven't you heard? If you're expecting hysteria, JR, you're going to be awfully disappointed. They're all friends. I don't see anything to be concerned about. Then you don't know Jenna. Or Bobby. These are awesome numbers, JR. 
These numbers are so big, they'd make even Daddy catch his breath. You're not getting cold feet, are you? No, not a chance. But look, this deal is plenty big. Why don't we just talk to McKay and see if he'll cut us in on it? It'll be a sub-zero morning in hell before McKay gives us a piece of this pie. Now, he's gonna swallow it whole and let the rest of us just lick up the crumbs. Well, uh, speaking of the Ewings... Oh, Ray Cribs. Who would have thought that one of Daddy's wild oats would ever have blown all the way back to South Fork? Damn. J.R., you seem to be taking this whole thing just with a grain of salt. Chuck seems to be paying more attention to Ray than he ever did to Brother Gary. Well, as long as he keeps pitching hay and mining the cows, I'll take care of him when I have to. J.R., I don't like this at all. It feels like, like just everything's slipping away. Chuck turning you and Noel over to Bobby and now, uh, Ray. Sue Ellen, you just keep working on your tan. I don't want to see you getting any worry lines. Well, J.R., I think the whole thing is totally unfair. You know, they're just squeezing you out to make a place for Bobby, that's all. I want you to understand one thing, sugar. Bobby's riding high right now. It's only a matter of time and place before I put a burr under his saddle. Yeah, or maybe she thought you were fine for a fling, just not worth marrying. You better keep a civil tongue in your head. You know, I came a long way to see what the shouting was all about. Frankly, I'm a little disappointed. Because your mama was so special to me, I'm not gonna bounce your butt out of here, but you better watch what you say to me. <laughs> now that's better. That's more what my mother was talking about, this rough, tough, raw Texan. What a contrast to all the polished gentlemen she knew. Well, this Texan is a hell of a lot more man than any of those hand-kissing foreigners. In France, you were the foreigner. Why didn't that occur to you? What occurs to me is, that if you were a son of mine mouthing off the way you do, you wouldn't be able to sit down for a month. Now, is there something about the truth that bothers you? Truth is in the eye of the beholder, boy. And you weren't old enough to behold anything then. Ellen, hold it. Sue Ellen, you want it all. You want the Ewing name, and privileges, the freedom to act like a tramp. And that's all you ever did want. Believe it or not, J.R., I loved you when I married you. Yeah, that's a long time ago. Been a lot of action since then. On both our sides. Let me tell you about Dr. Elby. Of all the psychiatrists in Dallas, you picked the one that's going to get you in the sack. I was surprised to see you and Bobby so chummy last night. When you said to bring a friend along, I didn't realize it'd be for your brother. Well, he needs special handling. He's so close to a divorce now, I don't want anything to go wrong. What could go wrong? They can get back together, reconcile. And you don't want that? I want what's best for Bob. Of course you do, and you're being very nice to him, sharing Ewing oil. I'm gonna do something even better. Oh? I'm gonna protect him from all the headaches and responsibilities of being an equal partner in the company. <laughs> You mean the fight for Ewing oil isn't over? It is for Bobby. I need your advice. Anything I can do to help? Well, I'm afraid it's going to take a little longer getting Lucy to marry me than I thought. What's the problem? I don't know. She says she needs more time. Well, you do have a problem. Indeed you do. When you shoot down Cliff Barnes, you're going to be out of the spotlight. And if you lose that, you just might lose little Lucy. But what can I do? If I push any harder, I'll scare her off. Well, she's a Ewing. We always seem to want things we can't get. You tell her that everything's off between the two of you and let me handle the rest. You sure it'll work? <laughs> Allow me to be the first to toast the groom. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. I didn't like that little move you made the other day, pulling your gun on me. But I did get your point. You want to control the bedroom, that's fine. But I control your company. And it's best you don't forget that. Not as long as I'm hardwood oil. <laughs> no, no, you don't understand. 
So I'm going to spell it out for you real slow. Right? Holly, you are no longer Harwood Oil. I am. Family's a shambles. It all started when you followed me from Haleyville and tricked me into marrying you. You wanted me for your wife. You just didn't know it. I wanted a wife that was going to bring peace and harmony to this family. I didn't expect a wife that was going to push my son into the arms of a she-devil. I think Michelle is the worst woman in Dallas. Maybe I can talk to him, change his mind. Too late. Damage is done. Oh, it was a sorry day when you first set foot in this house. <laughs> you don't believe that. I do. You just cost me my firstborn son. 